Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing right you should be watching me in black and white right now. Dum -dum this is one of my Zodiac films. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Today's film is about the gemstone of the zodiac and we are talking Pisces. So if you want to find out what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, unless I forgot to put it in black and white, in which case welcome to glorious Technicolor. <clears throat> and you want to find out a little bit more about the gemstone for Pisces and more about the gemstone itself then my friends you have the best seat in the house as I've said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere but how many of them have got a sloth on their straw with them Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, we will have established from the intro, this is another of my Zodiac films. Um, it is Pisces, and it is the gemstone associated with the month of March. Um, gemstones run per calendar month. Star signs wrap around two months. So what I've done is whatever the star sign is on the first of the month that's where I've allocated the stone to. So obviously with Pisces being February the 19th to March the 20th um, I've gone for the March stone, which is aquamarine. Um, but if you are a February Piscean, you may want to look at February stone as well, which is the amethyst, and see which one appeals to you more. Now, the aquamarine can run from almost clear through to a summer sky blue. Put a picture here of some aquamarine. And the colours I'm going to be using today are part of my Cleona collection. Some of the first ones that I bought. These blues down here. Um, I am very tempted to do an all shimmer look today using these two shades here. This one is Cryosphere and this one which is a duotone, duochrome, is a Rebirth. So um, I may just do those two. I might decide to pull in this pale matte which is called Tundra. Depends very much on how, just dug my thumb into that, depends very much on how the shimmer starts to look. Now, um, this is a teaching channel still, so if I am going too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there, feel free to speed me up. Um, I will be inserting a clip in just a moment where I discuss the differences between deep set eyes and hooded lids. 
people with deep set eyes often mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told they have hooded lids. Um, admittedly, the way that eyeshadow performs and wears on both eye type, very, very similar. So I can understand the confusion. But there are differences and there are differences to the way you need to work around to get your eyeshadow looking as good as possible. This is something that I've not heard many other people talking about so I've been including this in my films well over a year now. So um, The main part of the film will be the tutorial and then at the end of the film I'll tell you a little bit more about the gemstone for Pisces. So here comes the clip. When the clip is done I'll be back to put some colour on my eyes. Bit of a warning, if you've not been here before, I come very, very close up um, with both the clip and the tutorial so that you can see very, very clearly what I'm doing. Alright, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, 
get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open so two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues hey I am back okay so I'm going to start off by going into the duochrome which is rebirth which looks like this so it's got a blue with a almost like a champagne shift to it. Um, I would love to try some of the Cleona stained glass collection, but um, yeah, that's way out of my price range, unfortunately. There's a fair amount of kick up on this, but then I am using it as a matte rather than a shimmer. Yes, I know, I've chipped my acrylic because I hadn't done it thick enough at the um, cuticle. But seeing as how it's only my first time ever of doing my own nails, it's fine. I shall redo them this afternoon, probably. This is the Boozy Shop Tapered Blending Brush. Always hold your brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. And we do the Viennese Waltz of Blending. So we do natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and then reverse turns to come back out again. The reason we do that is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, which is over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds who have always been slim that have flexible eyelids as well. And this is a way of ensuring that you've got the pigment blended out with as few gaps or tiger striping as possible without overstretching the lid. So I always start on the outside edge because if you do end up putting down too much pigment, it's far easier to blend it out over here than it is when you get to here because your nose tends to get in the way. Now I know a lot of people don't like doing an oral shimmer look, but shimmers do actually react differently depending on the brush you use. I mean I'm actually using rather than a you know like a packing brush like you would normally use with a shimmer, I'm using a blending brush and you can see it is actually blending the pigment out as you would expect a matte to perform. A little bit of fallout on the lid, but I'm not overly concerned by that. But um, when you use a shimmer with a blending brush, what happens is that um, you're blending the base colour. And nine times out of ten, you buff away the shimmery element to it. So it will perform and give the finish of a satin. Some of them, depending on the formulation of the shadow, end up looking like a matte. So don't ever be, don't think that, oh, because I'm over 20, I can't use a shimmer in my crease. It's a lot of balls. You, you use it how you want it. It's your face, you paint it how you want. Now I do struggle, I, I have more fallout this side because this is the eye that I'm blind in and it was pulled around an awful lot when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. If you can see I've got super deep creasing just here. I don't know if you can see that tiger striping that it's causing. Um, what I do have to do with this eye when I'm putting um, the shimmer on the lid, I do have to stretch that eye out. But I will explain more about that when we get to that point. But you can see, 
this duochrome has blended out really lovely without any problems at all but it just gives a, a slightly more ethereal finish rather than a matte which can sometimes look very flat um, this gives a much more almost translucent effect which is what I wanted because obviously um, the aquamarine is a very very beautiful stone but the majority of them look almost clear they have the absolute faintest tinge of blue so I didn't want to do white because obviously they're not clear they do have this hint of blue but likewise I didn't want to use a matte shadow if I could help it because I really wanted the sort of etherealness to, to shine through and you can see that has blended on ridiculously easily it really has um, I might I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the lighter shade across my lid now and depending on how it looks I've got a um, I've got a deeper shimmer here called Necromancer which I may use in the outer edge just to give some definition to the eye depends how it looks once I've finished putting the other shadow on right this is a Morphe M321 brush and once I've got the pigment on the brush I will be wetting it I think I've managed to ungum the sprayer on this now so I'm going to pick up I can't remember what the name of this shade is already Cryosphere which looks like this I'm going to pack that onto the brush and then wet the brush yay now I need to dry this ferrule off the easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening your bristles because then you won't have a brush you'll have a stick right never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment because you will kill the pigment. I'm just going to apply this across the whole of the lid or the mobile lid I should say. They're looking really pretty. And again, this is not your typical packing brush because I wanted to give just a slightly different texture to this shadow. I'm just going to blend those two together. Hmm. Like that. I'm just going to dry the brush off and go back in again for the other eye now as I was saying I do have to treat this eye differently because the problem that I have with this one is that if I don't stretch the lid out I end up with pigment packing loosely into the crease and then throughout the day as it dries up it falls into my eye and down my face so Put my finger literally right next to where the creasing is and gently stretch that out but only as far as I need to to stretch the creasing itself and then I'm going to apply the pigment and as soon as the pigment is blended on to my satisfaction I'm letting go 
So if you have an issue like I do where you've got that super deep creasing there and you find that you are getting it crumbling into your eyes through the day, only stretch out the part of the lid that has the creasing. Only stretch it out as far as you need to to flatten the crease, i.e. don't put it out to your ear roll if you don't need to. And um, as soon as you're done, let go. And then just blend where those two meet. I quite like that, you know. I don't think I am going to put deeper on because I don't think it needs it. I might just add a wee bit more pigment to the eye at this side here. So you can see, you can get a really lovely look just with two colours. I mean, I did a one and done um, in one of my previous films. So you don't need to use a million colours to get a nice look. Right. I am now going to pause you, my darlings, while I pop some foundation and other base products on. And I will be back. To finish this eye look off. Now I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you, but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you, well, now. And I am back. As you can see I have blue brows. I used the soap brow trick and then using that little brush, use the shade Bookworm and literally just combed it up through my hair. I did used to use pomades um, but Revolution seemed to have stopped stocking the coloured brow pomades um, plus I was having the issue that they do actually dye your skin so I'd use the purple for example and then I'd have like pink tinged brows for the next three days which was fine unless I was trying to do a yellow look or a, a blue look and then pink brows didn't necessarily work. Um, I've got the Revolution brow mini, mini soap brow kit thing. You don't need to get that. The only reason I got it is because I find the little um, mini toothbrush shaped brush really helpful for brushing my brows up but you can just get a bar of soap and use the spoolie. Um, I don't, I'm just throwing that straight on the floor, isn't that clever of me? Yay! Thank goodness I've got another one over here that's clean I can use. Um, I don't wet the soap, I use it dry. Um, which I actually prefer because then it leaves the brows just a little bit sticky so when you apply the powder that sets the brow into place and also grips the powder so that the colour lasts all day and this way you're guaranteed of having a colour that will match your look okay this is the flat topped brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette love 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 this brush flat topped and chunky but you can use a smudger brush or a blending brush or anything really and i'm going to go into this shade and i'm just going to very lightly buff that along the lower lash line i don't tend to put anything in my waterline as a rule 
I've always had very very watery eyes add to that fibro add to that hay fever and um, yeah putting anything in the waterline just doesn't work but by going underneath the eye like this you can still finish your eye look off please excuse my throat growling it has eaten and for goodness sake it's half seven in the morning I've been up since half four had a bagel at half five there's really no need for my throat to growl at me right love this love 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 this and then I'm going to grab so glad that ABH have started selling this Nicole Guerrero glow kit again because I don't mind using it on camera and I'm going to go into Forever Lit which is the white here and this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago now and just pop a bit of that up under my brow along with everything else folks apparently gravity affects our brows as well and my eyes are already starting to water and I haven't even put anything in the water line see what I mean and then in a corner and I like to bring mine along underneath the tear duct and just blend it into whatever colour I've run underneath my eye you can just do the inner corner like that but I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely to just put it along and finish off there right my lovelies I'm going to pause you for one last time I'm going to lob some more of this highlighter all over my face well maybe not all over my face but certainly the high points um, put some mascara on, put some lippy on, do something with my hair and I'll be back with the finished look and a little bit more information on the gemstone itself. So uh, please don't go anywhere. I am back. I kind of went a little bit nuts with that highlighter and it's, it's highlighting a little visitor. I didn't realise it was there until I chucked highlight on. So that's lovely. Hmm. Mascara is the Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Lashes little mini sample. Lippy is the Charlotte Tilbury Coachella Coral. Because oranges and peaches go lovely with a blue look. So. This is the finished look for the gemstone for March, which is aquamarine. Again, I'll put a picture here and I'll tell you just a little bit more about the stone. As I was saying, it ranges from clear through to a beautiful summer's day blue. And it symbolises honesty good health, courage and serenity. The stone itself is a symbol of youth, happiness and beauty and is said to promote honesty, loyalty and good health. Thought to help cure heart, liver and stomach diseases. All that had to be done apparently was to drink the water in which the gem had been soaking Consult your doctor before attempting any kind of gemstone inspired medical advice. And sailors wore carved aquamarine stones depicting the god of Neptune for protection against the sea. So 
that's my little bit for you about the gemstone for Pisces or the month of May. March. <coughs> We're in the month of May right now. That's the gemstone for March. <sighs> Fibro brain is strong today. But what do you think? Now you've seen this, would you consider doing an all shimmer look? Or are you still very firmly in the I'll only use mats through my crease brigade? What do you think? Hmm? Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you, but rather craftily they're leaving me in your feed. So it's not obvious that you've been unsubbed. So please double check that. And double check if you have notifications on that they are still valid. Uh, once you've done that, please give this a like. And in the description box, no, in the comments box below. Oh, brain, where are you? In the comments box below, let me know whether you have any aqua marine jewellery. Whether you knew the links to the sailors of past times. And especially if you're a Pisces. Are you a February Pisces or a March Pisces? And are you more drawn to the February stone or the March stone? I would be really interested to know. And if you're not a Pisces, actually even if you are a Pisces, let me know your star sign and what your favourite gemstone is. What your gemstone of choice would be. If you were taken into a jeweller's that had every kind of gemstone, which would you choose? If money were no object, what would your choice be? If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something that appealed to you. Uh, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring the bell, say yes, however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes. And hopefully they'll tell you, I don't know, one in four of my films that I put up. Talking of the films that I put up, I've got an awful lot already that you can have a, a peruse through. So as I have said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere, and indeed my little straw sloth will say with me, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a drink, grab a snack, Put your feet up and indulge. Uh, just maybe not the relaxing one because you may end up going to sleep. Right, my lovelies, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.